Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Daniel. It was the worst morning of my life. I was getting ready to go to school. My dad came into the room in a panic. Daniel, Daniel, your mother. He was unable to talk because he started crying. In shock, I asked him, what's going on, dad? Did something happen to mom? His voice was shaking as he replied, son, your mom, your mom is not here anymore. Dad, I don't understand. Where is she? I asked. She's not here, Daniel. Son, please, no more questions. But don't worry. I'll do whatever it takes to bring your mom back. My mom had disappeared without a trace, and my dad wouldn't give me an explanation other than, Your mom is not here anymore. Whenever I'd ask him about her, he'd say, Don't worry. I'll bring her back. It didn't take long for me to lose patience with him. What do you mean, bring her back, Dad? I pleaded, but he wouldn't answer. He was acting really weird. I just couldn't accept what was going on. I missed my mom so much, but I was powerless to fix the situation. One night, my dad said, Daniel, I need to focus on finding your mom. I enrolled you in a boarding school. From now on, I want you to go there. Finding mom? Had she disappeared? This was the first time my dad used words like that. Before, I thought he meant mom had left us. But I knew I wouldn't get an answer from him, even if I asked. Dad, I want to stay with you, I said to him. His reply was simple, but filled with an odd tone of determination. No, I'm sorry, son. This is not up for discussion. It is what's best for you right now, Dad responded. My dad took me to boarding school the next day. As we were saying goodbye, he hugged me and said, One day, I will come back here with your mom, and together, we will take you home. After dad left, people from the school helped me find where I would stay. I was expecting a dormitory, but I discovered I'd be staying in a private room, almost like a luxury hotel. Dad had brought me to this new school in such a hurry that I'd never gotten a chance to do any research on it. This was the kind of high school billionaires sent their kids to. The annual tuition was $270,000. My dad was a high school physics teacher. There's no way he could afford such an expensive school. I called my dad and asked him how he'd paid for it. Daniel, please don't waste my time with this. I need to focus on bringing your mom back, he said dismissively. He was acting mysteriously again. What was he hiding? I was curious to find out where my mom was, why my dad wasn't giving me more details about her absence, and how he could afford such a fancy school. My dad was calling me every week, but our phone conversations never lasted for more than a few minutes. The last time he called, he'd said, I'm very close to finding your mom. Soon, we'll come pick you up, son. I never heard from him after that. I called him, but his phone was off. After a few months passed by, I started getting worried. Did something happen to him? Finally, I decided to act. I had to go back home to see if my dad was all right. When I entered our house, I saw spider webs hanging everywhere. Then I realized he was also gone, just like my mom. That meant that it had been a long time since he'd been home. My dad quit his job after my mom disappeared. He never left the bedroom. I thought he was depressed. He talks about bringing mom back but won't even leave his room, I thought. I walked into my parents' bedroom with these thoughts in my mind. I looked around. Everything looked normal. There was a photo of my parents hanging on the wall. I would need that photo if I ever went to the police to investigate their disappearance. So I took it out of its frame. While struggling to remove the picture from the wall, I heard a sound. What is that? I gasped in shock. A hidden door opened inside the wall. Apparently, moving the picture frame would trigger the mechanism. I walked in through the door hesitantly. This was definitely a secret room. There was a writing board on the wall. It was filled with mathematical equations that my dad had written. There were notebooks everywhere, filled with calculations on every page. I took one and looked inside. I saw a box in the corner. When I opened it, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was chock full of diamonds and gold. So this was how he'd been able to send me to such an exclusive private school. But how did he get his hands on them in the first place? I kept looking around for clues. There was a black and white newspaper on the floor. My eyes opened wide when I saw my dad's photo on the front page. The story's headline read, Genius Man Invents Color TV. I checked the date of the paper, and it was September the 3rd, 1928. There was a sizable structure on the other side of the room. I moved in closer to examine it. It was some sort of capsule designed to fit a single person. I cracked open the hatch door and peeked inside. There was a small screen and a keypad with numbers on it. On the screen, it said 1895. To test it out, I typed 3333 
and hit enter. A red text started flashing on the screen. Unable to initiate time travel. Error code 0056? Time travel? I shouted in disbelief. I stepped out of the capsule, frightened. My dad. My dad had invented the time machine. Is this for real? But that's impossible. I impossible! I started babbling to myself. There was a small screen on the capsule. Door open, it said. I closed the capsule door. The screen flashed. Enter password to initiate return. To initiate return? Is this what I think it is? Is this for returning to the present? I wiped the cold sweat from my forehead. What could the password be? At that moment, I remembered a text message my dad sent me one year ago on my birthday. You came along and changed all of our passwords. Of course. My dad used different versions of my birthday whenever he needed to set up a password. That's what he was referring to in my birthday message. I decided to use the password he used most frequently. First, I put in the year I was born, 2006. Then, I entered the day, 13. Finally, I had to enter my birth month, but knowing my dad, he'd put three zeros in front of it to strengthen the password. Triple O and three. The capsule started powering up with a loud zap. A thick white smoke burst out as it began to shake and vibrate. The smoke and vibrations grew more intense. It felt like the capsule was about to explode. I ran to the opposite corner of the room. Oh my god, w w what is happening? I stammered in fear. I was convinced the capsule would explode, taking the entire house with it. After a while, the capsule began to calm down. Suddenly, it went silent. The capsule was still. The room was filled with the strange mist. The door slowly started opening. Dad, I called out, but it wasn't my dad who stepped out of the capsule. It was my mom. Daniel, honey, she exclaimed. Oh, thank goodness. You have no idea how much I missed you. I ran to my mom to embrace her. Just then, my dad walked out of the capsule as well. <coughs> I need to fix this chemical mist issue. I wonder if it would go away if I used tetrabromo instead of hexabromo. I'll test it out as soon as I can. I ran to him to give him a hug. I actually had scheduled our return, Dad said. It was supposed to initiate it automatically, but something went wrong. There must have been a glitch. If you hadn't initiated it manually, we would have been stuck in 1895 forever. Then he explained everything that happened. I finally got the whole picture. I already mentioned that my dad is a physics teacher. Time travel is a subject that physicists have been exploring for more than a century. There have even been some experiments, but it has yet to be successfully proven. My dad had been reading an article on quantum physics when a light bulb went off in his head. He worked on his idea for weeks and finally devised a formula. He could hardly believe it when he realized his formula might be the key to time travel. Unsatisfied with just a theory, he set out to build a time machine. Because it was such a huge discovery, he had to keep his work a secret, so my mom helped him build a secret room in their bedroom. After eight months, the first prototype of the time machine was ready. First, my dad experimented with animals. When he knew the machine was working, he ventured into the past. My dad needed a vast amount of money to develop the time machine further. He would travel back to the 19th and 20th centuries to get that money. He would take more modern technology like a vintage color TV, microwave oven, or a vacuum cleaner to the past and establish himself as their inventor. He was improving people's lives and raising money for his time machine at the same time. He'd also buy diamonds and gold before returning to the present. Usually when my dad traveled through time, mom would bring him back, but mom couldn't contain her curiosity about the past. My dad added an auto return feature to the machine so they could travel as a couple for the first time. Unfortunately, the time machine had a glitch. It sent my dad to the target year, but accidentally sent my mom to an unknown time. Then the auto return feature brought my dad back to the present, but not my mom, trapping her in the past. After my mom had disappeared, my dad started time traveling to different years in hopes of finding my mom. After countless trips, he found her in the year 1895, but the machine glitched again, and they couldn't return to the present. Thankfully, I found the time machine in the secret room and manually activated the return feature, allowing them to return to the present. I'm so happy to be reunited with my parents again. My dad is working on perfecting his time machine. Recently, I came up with the idea to bring zippers to the past, and he made hundreds of thousands of dollars with them. As it is now, the time machine can only go one way, to the past.
my dad has only begun working out the complex math of time travel. When he succeeds in unlocking the secrets of future travel, he'll officially announce his invention. You are the first person to ever learn about his most incredible creation.